In today's video, I'm going to be discussing the importance of proper selection of test frequency when you're doing multi-layer exams. So to start off, I just want to show you a pencil probe scanning an EDM block that's got three different notches. And these notches range from 0.2 millimeters deep to a half a millimeter deep, I think. Which, so those are pretty, no, this is in thousands. So it's eight thousands, twenty thousands, and forty thousands. Forty thousands is pretty close to a millimeter in depth. Now, you know, typically people will set up on, a lot of procedures have you setting up on surface breaking notch. Okay, well, that's a no-brainer, right? Now, if I go to one that's a little bit less deep, the 20 mil, you know, it's a little bit smaller. And if I go to the 8 mil deep, I mean, you can still see it very easy, right? And you can find these EDM notches with 10 kilohertz, 50 kilohertz, 500 kilohertz, 1 megahertz. You know, that's the easy part of eddy current. You know, oh, what do you have to do to switch to a different frequency? Not much. You just dial in 580 kilohertz, for example. Start tapping on your part, hitting all a couple times. Go to your angle control. You're going to have air off to the left. And then you're going to have material contact or operating point for your aluminum on the right. And there's your crack. There's your EDM notch right there, right? So it, it doesn't get much easier than that. So now I'm going to go back down to 300 kilohertz. A lot of people seem to like 300, 240, whatever you just, your procedure calls for. So now I'm just going to set noise horizontal again. Air to the left, operating point on the right. See how easy that is? Now we're going to do something to make it a little more difficult. This aluminum shim is only one millimeter thick. I'm going to put that on the 40 thousandths deep surface breaking notch. So now that fairly deep notch is one millimeter below the surface. Let's just hit null. Right now I'm scanning over the 40 thousandths deep notch. You can't even see it, right? So when you calibrate on 300 kilohertz and you can see the flaws at the surface, when the surface breaking, no brainers, you're like, oh, my test is good. Let's just start scanning material. But if you haven't done something to confirm at what depth you can see flaws, you're running a blind test. You know, you don't know if you can see flaws because they're just not there, or you're not running a large enough diameter probe, or a low enough test frequency, or a combination of both. So, what's a good way to mock that up? What I did was I took a couple really thick pieces of aluminum here, when I say really thick, I'm talking in terms of eddy current. See, these are probably about five or six mils in th five or six millimeters in thickness. And what I did was I butted them up against each other. So this is a this is a really deep crack, right? And then I went into my ET toolbox. And again, you can make a lot of Cal standards from Home Depot uh, products. So this is just some aluminum tape like a plumber would use. And I very carefully just started layering it until I got two millimeters of aluminum. So now what I'm gonna do is place the two millimeters of aluminum on top of that really deep subsurface crack. I'll put that down on the table. And this pencil probe, I don't care how low of a frequency you run, you're not gonna see it. Let's just test that theory out. Let's just go down to 5 kilohertz, for example. That's 50 hertz. We're on the 5 kilohertz. Where are we at? That's getting pretty close right there. All right, so we're going to gnaw on that material. My phase is going to be way out of whack. See, I mean, you just, you can crank in a bunch of gain there. You're not going to see anything. It's just, it's too small of a diameter of a coil to be running at this low of a frequency. Low frequencies are typically used with wider coils. So let's pop this one off. 
and here I've got a little spot probe and this is about what I guess about three-eighths of an inch in diameter and this coil let me look at it and see what it says for test frequencies it's uh it's dark in here my AV guy's not up this early it's uh you know what I can't even see hold on I gotta look in the light I want to give you all the information All right, this says one to 50 kilohertz. So this coil is designed to operate in that low test frequency range. So now I've got five kilohertz. And we're gonna have to set our noise because it's gonna be way out of whack. Okay, tap it on the part, just like you do at the dentist. When you put a filling in, it tap, 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 make sure everything's good. There off to the left, there's our operating point on the aluminum. So now let's scan over that. Whoa, you can see it. Maybe I'll move my move my uh, horizontal position a little bit more on screen here so you can see it a little better. Okay, so get him scanning over it. I could see it, no problem, right? Does anybody see a problem with this video? Finding a subsurface deep crack at two millimeters below the surface gives you a pretty high phase lag with five kilohertz. So what do you think I'm gonna break out next? The slide rule, it's the best tool in any current testing. So <clears throat> I was watching a video the other day and a guy um, you know, I was talking about doing subsurface testing, you know, two millimeters deep using five kilohertz. And as you know, from your eddy current studies, there's no exactly one right answer when it comes to test frequencies, right? Whether you use a slide rule or if you use a calculation or use an app or through trial and error, you just need to get close. And then when you think you're close enough with the test frequency, you get your cow block out. And if you don't have any subsurface notches, you know, you, you make something up. So you confirm that your system's working adequately to, def to detect the types of flaws that you need to. So I'm thinking to myself, what would be F90 frequency for a subsurface flaw two millimeters below the surface? Well, with the slide rule, you just take this plastic slider here. Now this one has the Mills slider towards the front. So I'm just gonna flip the card over, stick it back inside of the slider rule. So now we're working on millimeters. And you take this plastic slider and you move the red hair line to 0.8 standard depths of penetration, which is right here. The next thing you do is you take the slider and you're going to adjust this middle scale here. That's for kilohertz. We're going to put two. We're going to put two millimeters right there. So we want a flaw at two millimeters below the surface have f90 effects we want the flaws pretty much to be vertical right now that i've done those two operations with the slide rule then i just move this plastic slider over to 7075 t6 aluminum which is right about there and that's like 2.2 kilohertz so the slide rule tells us 2.2 kilohertz for F90. Now let's take a watch what happens when we adjust our test frequency to 2. Point, what is it? 2 kilohertz. I'm gonna hit no, then we gotta do a little bit of tapping to get our noise horizontal. Erase. Now we're gonna scan over that same crack. 
voila, straight up and down, right? That gives you better detection, right? Especially if you're running a strip chart set to the vertical component, you're going to see it stick out a lot better. So it's very important that you optimize your test frequencies, especially when you're looking subsurface. Because like I say, if, if you're not running a low enough test frequency with a wide enough coil, you can just be running blind and you'll miss these types of flaws. So, And I just want to point out um, again in the video, just because one guy's using 5 kilohertz and I'm using 2 kilohertz, I don't know what constraints he's under. Maybe his test procedure mandates that he uses 5 kilohertz. Or, you know, could be a variety of reasons. But if you're like me and you have a you know, kind of a healthy questioning attitude and you're curious and you want to see, well, what would happen if I ran five kilohertz versus two kilohertz on something that's two millimeters below the surface? You know, take a trip to Home Depot, log on to Amazon and get you some of these little aluminum plates and you can mock up just about any situation that you want. And when you do those types of things and you run all sorts of little little experiments with your own tester at home like i do on the weekends nights holidays whatever it builds your confidence a lot you know so you don't know what you don't know until you start playing around with it and mocking things up but if you're curious just like dr forrester was um you know you can really improve your confidence and that goes a long way when you're trying to sell your test results to a customer especially with theirs when there's costly repairs, you know, you got to know what you're talking about. And if you mock things up like this, it will improve your confidence, make you a much better technician. Thanks for watching.